Released in Japan on July 23rd, 2015, with a North American and European release following on April the 19th, 2016, we have Landgrisser Reincarnation Tensei. This title marks the first Landgrisser game in the main series since 1998, and the second game released outside of Japan since the very first game which was released as Warsong on the Sega Genesis in 1991. However, Warsong was edited for the American audience, but you can play the unaltered translated Japanese version, as well as other games in the series via emulation or as a reproduction cartridge like I have if you want to play on original hardware. The game was developed by KoreaSoft and Masaya Games, and published by Extreme Games in Japan and Axis Games outside of Japan. In an interesting move, the artwork for Langrisa Reincarnation Tensei was not done by Satoshi Urushihara who had provided the artwork for all the previous games, but by Hiroshi Kaida, also known as Skullbites. The game is a tactical strategy game and is commonly compared with Fire Emblem which predates Langrisa by one year. However, the grid based tactical strategy layout and certain unit strengths and weaknesses are where most of the similarities end. However, I'll go a little more in depth with this later on. In this game you play as a young man named Aris Lavina. When he was younger, Aris was separated from his younger sister Lycoris, and after being taken in by a lord, he is living out his life peacefully in the city of Borsalane with his maid Maya, friends Alma and Ansel, and instructor Toa. The continent he's living on faces a problem involving the sea levels rising, and his peaceful days are soon shattered when the Imperial Army attacks. Feeling cornered by Imperial troops, Ares seeks refuge inside a church, and desperate to defend himself, he searches for a weapon. That weapon just happens to be the Holy Sword Langrisser, and after escaping Borsalane with his friends, he finds himself briefly travelling with the Army of Light while fending off attacks from the Imperial Army and the Army of Darkness. But as Ares and his friends journey, the Wheel of Fate is ever turning and soon he has to make some choices that will ultimately affect the fates of himself and the people around him. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good I'm quite fond of Langris's unit system as I think that having a small army fight another small army fits the whole war theme pretty well. All units have 10 HP regardless of level or rank and can hire mercenaries to help them in battle. Whenever these mercenaries defeat an enemy, the unit those mercenaries are assigned to gain the experience. However, if the unit is defeated, any mercenaries assigned to them will also disappear too. This works as a double-edged sword, as if your unit goes, then so do all the mercenaries you have assigned to them as well. This, combined with the strengths and weaknesses of the units, add to the strategic value of the game, and the enemy won't be afraid to attack you if they have a chance of winning. To add to the strategy, each unit has a command range, and if their mercenaries are within the command range, they get an attack and defense bonus. Also, by having them next to the unit, they can recover health each turn. On top of that, the commanding unit can also choose to spend a turn staying in one place in order to heal 3 HP and 2 SP, the latter being used for skills or magic. Units can also take advantage of terrain bonuses, as that provides a defensive bonus, sometimes at a cost to how many squares the unit can move. This makes unit placement very important, and having units too close together or too far apart can be your undoing. The class system is another feature I was quite fond of. As opposed to Fire Emblem in which you need an item to promote a character, Langrisser has characters promoting at level 10 automatically. When a character reaches level 10, they are given two classes in which they can be promoted to. This process will reset the character's level back to 1, but they will receive increased statuses such as their attack, defense or command range to name a few. Depending on the class, it also changes the type of mercenaries available to them too, and even changes their strengths and weaknesses, which adds yet another strategy element to the game. The other thing I really liked with Langrisser is its story. I found the story for Langrisser to be quite engaging, and easily the strongest point for this game. As I mentioned earlier, Ares would need to make some choices which will affect the fates of himself and the people around him, and the very first choice in Chapter 8 of the game will affect which faction he decides to join. Whether he joins the Army of Light, the Army of Darkness, or the Imperial Army, the way the game handles each faction I feel is very well done. The characters are relatable, and it's easy to see why some of them will act the way they do when you encounter them as enemies. Depending on the faction joined, this also determines important events, such as details on the Sword Langrisser, to revealing information about Ares' past to name a few. Ares can also improve his relationships with his friends and the faction he decides to join, maybe perhaps finding that special someone along the way. 
At the end of the game, you also get a brief description of what each character in your faction did after the events of the game. And depending on how well they did, it can range from great achievements to more morbid events. Nonetheless, I found each story engaging and with New Game Plus carrying your levels and stats across, it made the game a little easier. But what isn't easy is what I've got for The Bad. The difficulty scaling of the enemy units can be very off-putting and punishing, especially on your first playthrough. Towards the end of the game, you can find yourself severely underleveled with enemy units having 50 or more attack against your 30 or 40 defense. This can turn later chapters into a one-sided massacre unless you have RS leveled up to weaken enemies before finishing them off with your other units, providing they're strong enough to even damage them. The enemy AI being programmed to take any opportunity where it can win a battle will happily destroy your units unless you hurt them enough to spend a turn healing. Graphically, I can't say I was too keen on the sprites used on the maps. While you can zoom in and out using the L button, the sprites look a bit squished up. Another thing I wasn't awfully keen on was the display for the amount of health left on the sprites. There were times I'd gotten numbers messed up which frustrated me to no end. Battle animations I thought were far too basic and incredibly repetitive. When units are engaged in battle, you either see your one character run up and make contact with another character, or multiple if you're up against a mercenary unit. And after damage calculation, if you're up against a mercenary unit, you may see a number of them fall over, or fall off their mounts. To me it looked very lazy and uninspiring compared to the other titles in the series. Just check out Langrisser 1 and Langrisser 4 for comparison. I can't say I'm particularly too fond of the models used for the battle animations either, and it ended up getting to a point where I just turned off battle animations entirely just to speed things up. Lastly, I don't even know why there's an option to ask for advice when trying to befriend your allies. The advice costs a small amount of points and doesn't help in any way, shape or form. You're better off using those points to hire mercenaries or buy the overpriced weapons or armor which for the most part makes a minimal impact on how your characters will survive the next battle. But enough complaining from me, it's now time for... The Opinion Langrissa Reincarnation Tensei isn't exactly the best game out there, but I wouldn't say it's absolute garbage either. I enjoyed the music of the game and I think it's quite nostalgic, especially for fans of the older series as I recognized arrangements of music from Langrissa 2. The setting incorporating machinery alongside swords and sorcery was an interesting move, and I think while a lot of people will compare the Langrisser series to Fire Emblem, I think it handles a number of things better. However, this game has a long way to go to catch up with its predecessors, but if you like your grid based tactical strategy games, as well as Fire Emblem, it never hurts to give this game a go. I did enjoy myself playing the game, it just took me a while to really get into it. So with that, it's time for my rating. Langrissa, Reincarnation Tensei, gets the smug hedgehog thing which has no relevance to the story whatsoever and more or less annoyed me to no end out of 10. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review.